Hello there guys, welcome to one of my live videos. Manchester United have just drawn 0-0 with Wolves at Old Trafford. So yet again, uh, Manchester United have failed uh, to cut uh, the gap um, on that uh, top four. You know, because obviously no Chelsea uh, dropped uh, points uh, today against Leicester because they uh, drew 2-2. Uh, so we're now where uh, we do uh, remain uh, six points uh, behind top four. And we are now, of course, uh, winless in our uh, last uh, three uh, Premier League uh, games. Of course, uh, today, um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer reverted to the 4-2-3-1 formation because in the two games prior to this one, he went uh, with three um, at the back and that. Of course, uh, we saw uh, Bruno Fernandes making um, his debut for uh, the club. Uh, Solskjaer um, would give his um, overarching view um, on the game, and this is for me. Uh, this is for me. Uh, more no perception, and he says, you know, Manchester United dominated the game. He also says, you know, we dominated uh, the possession, but he did say, you know, Wolves uh, looked uh, very uh, good um, on the counter attack, and you know, today Wolves did um, have uh, quite um, a few uh, chances. Obviously, you know, Raul Jimenez had a couple of chances. David De Gea made a few good saves. You know, Adam Traore had one or two chances. You know, David De Gea had to make um, a couple of uh, saves and that. But I thought overall, from my own perception, you know, the game uh, lacked uh, quality. And I thought a lot of aspects um, of the game did replicate the game against Wolves at Molyneux in the FA Cup uh, third uh, round. But I thought, you know, today Manchester United were extremely uh, poor. I think, you know... We didn't register one single shot on target to like the 40th uh, minute um, of the game. Uh, Bruno Fernandes um, wasn't so good on his debut for Manchester United. You know, I think he had um, a lot of uh, decent touches in the first half. I think you know he had uh, quite. Um, I think he had the most touches um, in the first half. Did Bruno Fernandez? I think Bruno Fernandez had, had around two or three shots on target, but you know they were uh, from uh, current uh, far out. You know, I thought Pereira, you know, had a lot of wasteful opportunities in the first half. You know, he was shooting from long range. And I think Manchester United need to consider uh, getting uh, rid um, of Andres Pereira because definitely, you know, um, he um, is a um, liability. I thought Martial was extremely uh, poor uh, today. You know, again, not getting um, enough uh, service, Anthony Martial. Daniel James, again, you know, not getting um, enough uh, service. And I don't think Daniel James has been so good um, in the last uh, month and that. But, you know, this is this result um, isn't uh, good enough. You know, it isn't uh, good enough than that. You know, I think, you know, the blame needs to uh, stem uh, from Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. You know, obviously, I think, you know, the interchange was definitely you no know, questionable, you know, because Bruno Fernandes is predominantly an attacking midfielder. And obviously, you know, I think in the second half, he'd been rotated to a holding midfielder. But why is Bruno Fernandes uh, playing him um, as a holding midfielder? Because, you know, that's uh, not his uh, predominant uh, position. So, yeah, and I said, you know, didn't I, you know, Solskjaer has been tactically inept for the vast majority of this season. He doesn't seem to have a plan A, you know, um, he doesn't uh, seem to um, have um, a plan B. And, you know, I don't think um, he's uh, the long-term uh, solution for uh, Manchester United. And I'm not going to criticise Bruno Fernandes because today was only his first game as a Manchester United player because it does take some players uh, time, you know, to uh, currently uh, settle in. But I am hopeful, you know, that he can replicate at Manchester United what he did in his two and a half uh, years um, at Sport in Lisbon. I don't think, you know, Luke Shaw was good today either. You know, I think, you know, he's another player Manchester United could consider getting rid of. You know, Lindelof and Maguire, you know, were uh, too uh, good uh, today. But I thought in general, you know, the game uh, was very, very um, poor, you know. You know, it, it, it was a very, very uh, poor uh, game, to be uh, quite um, honest with you. You know, Wolves will be the happier um, out with their current uh, two uh, teams. Again, Solskjaer you know, brought some substitutions on. Um, I, it, I don't know why he brought Jesse Lingard on in the second half. You know, Jesse Lingard should not be uh, coming on for Manchester United because he has been inconsistent for the vast majority of this season. And I think, you know, again, he's another one of the players that Manchester United do need to uh, consider uh, getting uh, rid of. Obviously, we saw Diego the lot come on in the game. He should have won it at the end for Manchester United because um, he did um, have a um, big uh, chance. And we also saw Mason Greenwood uh, come on um, in the game. But Jesse Lingard should have uh, never uh, come on. I don't think, you know, Andres Pereira should have played. You know, I don't think uh, Juan Matara was too uh, good today, but I think the vast majority of our players were just so uh, very, very um, poor in that. 
And, you know, we are still in that top four race. And, you know, the main explanation why we're in that top four race is because Chelsea have been dropping points. And we are uh, six points uh, behind the uh, top four. But there's quite a few teams there uh, that are going uh, for that uh, current uh, top uh, four, as you um, all uh, know. And some people say, you know, look, you know, we haven't got Pogba. We haven't got McTominay. You know, we haven't got Marcus Rashford. You know, we haven't. You know, we've got some uh, quite um, a few um, injuries, but, you know, that's not excusable for how bad um, our uh, performance uh, was uh, today. And again, you know, we just haven't been uh, clinical enough um, in front um, of goal because we did have some uh, chances uh, today. I don't think we got in Wolves' box. I don't think we created ch a chance in Wolves' box until, like, the 71st uh, minute um, of the game and that. But it just isn't uh, good enough uh, for uh, Manchester United and that. You know, Bruno Fernandes needs to play well. You know, and he needs to settle in this team, you know, because we have paid a substantial amount for him. You know, we've paid, what, 55 million euros up front with 25 million euros in add-ons, which does rise it to 80 million euros. And that equates to around 68 million in pounds sterling. And Bruno Fernandes is our fourth most expensive signing. And he has got a five and a half year deal here with an option to extend it for a further year. So it's like um, a six and a half a year uh, deal. But, you know, Bruno Fernandes, you know, may not settle in straight away because, you know, this is his first time um, in the Premier League, don't forget. He is uh, 25 uh, years in the age. But reverting back to what I said, you know, injuries um, is not um, excusable and that. And, you know, we're not in the commanding position, you know, that we should be in, reflecting on the amount of money that Manchester United have spent. Because we've spent nearly a billion pounds on recruiting new players in, in the last six or seven years. Not only that, you know, we've got the highest wage bill in the Premier League and we are one of the uh, biggest uh, clubs um, in the world. Since Solskjaer come in, you know, he has recruited five new players to Manchester United. You know, he recommended, you know, three players in last summer. We spent nearly £150 million on Daniel James and wan -Bissaka and on Harry uh, Maguire. And also, too, you know, we got uh, Bruno Fernandes in, in January. And we also, you know, have got um, Angol. Um, we've also got Odian Igolo in. Now, I don't think he's been to Manchester yet, you know, to uh, complete um, his medical. But it did uh, confirm that Manchester United have got Odian Igolo on loan until the end um, of the season. So it is a six-month loan. There is no option to make the deal permanent after the loan. And that I think Manchester United have paid around three or four million pounds to get him um, on loan. And I think Man United are paying around a third of his wages because I think his wages are substantial. I think he's on around £300,000 a week. So Man United are going to pay around £100,000 a week to uh, Odeon um, Igalo and that. And Solskjaer gave his overarching view on Manchester United recommending him in. And, you know, he feels as though he's an experienced player and he thinks, you know, he will do well for Manchester United. Obviously, you know, he's a good cover up for Rashford. He's also an alternative to Martial. You know, Martial, you know, was very, very uh, poor today. I think also Andres Pereira was uh, very, very um, poor. <laughs> but he is uh, 30 uh, years um, of age. He's Odeon um, Igalo. Obviously, you know, it's beneficial as well because he has played in the Premier League. He served three years with Watford and scored 39 goals in 99 appearances during his three years with Watford. And I think he played three times against uh, Manchester United. Obviously, he served quite a few years in China. Scored 46 goals in 72 games um, in China and that did uh, the current uh, player. But we have got him on loan from Shanghai, Swan uh, this current uh, player. Obviously, when he was younger, he played in Norway with Lin. He also played in Italy with Undernese. He also ha has had a couple of uh, loan spells over Granada. And last year, he was the top scorer for the African Cup uh, nation. So this player is a prolific uh, goal scorer, you know, definitely in that. But, you know, he will be um, a Manchester United uh, player, uh, definitely in that. But I just feel as though, you know, the structure in our team isn't right. You know, there's no cohesion in the team and that. And with Wolves, you know, my, com my perception is totally comparison because with Wolves, Wolves, you know, the cohesion in their team's right. You know, their structure in their team's right. You know, they've got a great attacking trio in Adam Traore, you know, Raul Jimenez and Diego Jota. Um, I also uh, do uh, like uh, Ruben Neves, so... 
the is some players in Wolves' team um, I would be uh, determined uh, to take uh, definitely in that. But like I said, you know, Wolves are a really hard uh, team to break down because not only good attackively, they're also very uh, good uh, defensively, um, are Wolves. And you've got to praise Nuno Santo because he has uh, done a um, really good job since he got recommended into Wolves. You know, Wolves, of course, are in the Europa League, you know, knockout stages. That's very good to their standards. I don't see them winning the Europa League. But, you know, they've done well to get her to the knockout stages. You know, they did finish 7th last season. Last season, they enjoyed uh, a very good cut run there, progressed to the semi-finals of the FA Cup for the first time in 21 years and that. But Wolves are a very competitive team. And like I mentioned, you know, their record against uh, the top six sides um, is also, you know, uh, very, very um, good and that. But, you know, I said, you know, didn't I prior to the game, you know, that Wolves was going to be a very, very um, difficult game. Obviously, you know, now um, it is uh, the winter break and, you know, we have got Chelsea uh, next in the league and I think that's on the 17th of February. And, you know, I think, you know, although Odeon Egalo will be uh, making um, his debut um, in that uh, current uh, game and that. But I think, you know, with the signings that Man United have recommended, you know, I think, you know, we've got a good player in Fernandez. You know, we've also got a decent player in Odeon um, Egalo. That doesn't uh, change uh, the culture of the club. And it doesn't uh, change uh, my perception um, on, a, on a Ligue 1 Solskjaer, basically. Because I still think, you know, there is a lot of uh, cultural problems at the football club. And I think, you know, we need someone to come in that can change, you know, uh, the culture and the culture of the club. You know, I think there's, all, there's a lot of problems with the backroom staff. You know, also, you know, we need to get rid of Ed Woodward. We also need to get rid of the Glazers. Um, obviously, you know, there was reports emerging out before the game saying that Man United could, you know, walk out you know, in the uh, 58th minute of the game. I don't think they did, um, as what um, I uh, saw um, anywhere. Uh, what I uh, saw um, anyway, I don't think, you know, they currently uh, did uh, walk out um, and all um, of that. But we need to get Edward Wood out, we need to get the Glazers out, we need to get um, our current uh, board out because our board have been um, a liability for several years. And I think, you know, we also uh, need um, a change um, of management and that. Because, like I said, you know, Solskjaer is not the long-term uh, solution uh, for uh, Manchester United. I think he's clueless he's only going to Solskjaer. You know, his tactics are questionable, doesn't have a plan A, doesn't have a plan B. And I just feel as though, you know, that uh, the club um, is too uh, big uh, for uh, Man and Solskjaer. You know, despite the fact that he knows the club inside out, because he was a great player for Manchester United for um, 11 uh, years, but I just think as a manager, he's totally comparison to how he was um, as a player. And I just think as a manager, he is uh, too um, inexperienced, basically, in that. You know, Man United won't sack Ole Gunnar Solskjaer yet. Yeah, you know, like we've confirmed, we are determined to back him at least in the next couple of windows to see who else um, he can uh, recommend um, in and that. So we are uh, determined uh, to back Solskjaer, back Solskjaer. And obviously, if we decided to sack Solskjaer any time within this two-and-a-half-year uh, uh, period, Obviously, we'd have to pay something to uh, currently uh, get rid of him. But can Manchester United afford to pay to get rid of him? Because, you know, we are still paying the salaries of, what is it, Van Gaal, Mourinho and, of course, uh, David Moyes, despite the fact that Manchester United currently uh, sat them. But Solskjaer's got two and a half years uh, left um, on his uh, current uh, deal. You know, he's been here 13 months now and I feel as though he's been here long enough. You know, he's been here um, over um, a year. He's been permanent boss for around uh, 10 months now. But, you know, he's just he's just been so inconsistent as Solskjaer. You know, we've enjoyed our worst start to a Premier League season for 30 years. Solskjaer's lost more games now in the Premier League than he's um, actually uh, won. So that's um, a very uh, bad uh, statistic. You know, Solskjaer, when he was the interim manager, you know, my perceptions were different on Solskjaer then because I felt as though then he was the right manager for Manchester United. Because in that three-month period when he was the interim manager, you know, the results were good. The performances were good. He got the best um, out of these uh, group um, of players. But since he's got the job permanently, you know, everything um, has just uh, seemed to them um, all uh, gone uh, wrong, uh, basically. And, you know, in this game against Wolves today, you know, we expected a performance from Manchester United. And we expected, you know, to get the win, you know, considering that we've just got Bruno Fernandes on the board. But, you know, um, you know it, it, it hasn't uh, currently uh, materialised in that. And, you know, I thought, you know, would have done because, you know, we was coming to this game... On the back of two wins, you know, we beat Man City in the Cowboy Cup semi-final second leg, you know, on Wednesday. Obviously, you know, that wasn't enough for us to, you know, progress to the, you know, final because we lost 3-1 to one aggregate. And we beat Tranmere 6-0 in the FA Cup fourth round and that. So this just, this just, this just 
isn't uh, good enough than that. And, you know, I said we've got quite a few ambitions this season. And our ambitions is, you know, to get in that top four so we can get Champions League football. We also, you know, want to get some silverware on the board because that's also very um, important. You know, we've lacked silverware in the last six or seven years. And, you know, we need to try and get silverware on the board. You know, we can win the FA Cup possibly. You know, we can win the Europa League. That's automatic uh, qualification uh, for uh, the Champions League, uh, basically. But like I've said, Solskjaer is not the right man for Manchester United. He's out of his depth. And like I said, he's inexperienced. And I've also got the same perception on Michael Carrick. Good player, but also inexperienced. Kieran McKenna, inexperienced in that. But overall, anyway, I don't like the way the football club has been run for several years and that. And, you know, the Glazers, like I said, need to go. You know, is there a possibility chance that the Glazers, you know, could consider uh, selling uh, the football club and that. But, you know, we are still in that top four race, but, you know, I just don't know what's going on uh, with Manchester United. But some people may take some positives from today's game, saying, look, you know, it just proves that we can compete against top six, the top teams because we haven't been so bad against the elite opposition this season. We've had some decent results, but we haven't uh, really uh, replicated that um, against the uh, lower um, opposition, and uh, that is um, the element um, of concern, uh, basically. I think for me on perception today, Solskjaer should have stuck with three at the back, because like I mentioned in the preview, you know we do seem to look more expansive with three at the back. You know, I don't think that four two three one formation suits our standards, but you know, reverting back to what I said about Fernandez, he should have stayed in that, you know, attacking role. Why did Solskjaer put him um, as a holding midfielder in that? You know, he did you know, the interchange was very questionable. I think Martial moved on at one point, Pereira got switched to another position, so I don't uh, see uh, what he is uh, currently uh, doing in that. But overall, you know, we need to see a variety of changes um, at the football club, uh, definitely. More players definitely no need to go. I think Solskjaer um, has confirmed uh, there will be uh, more uh, departures at Manchester United. Obviously, you know, this year, two players have gone. Obviously, you know, Ashley Young went to Inter Milan for £1.5 million. He went to Inter Milan after he enjoyed eight and a half years at the club. Obviously, you know, Rojo went out on loan to Estudiantes and that. Um, obviously, the main explanation why we let Rojo go is because, obviously, you know, we've got a lot of centre-backs in the team. And, obviously, you know, Eric Bay has just come back from injury recently. Fossil Mensa has just come back from injury you know, recently. They have not yet started a game yet or played in any game since they have uh, come uh, back uh, from um, injury and that. But Solskjaer did say, you know, he didn't expect, you know, Ashlung or Rojo to leave in the uh, January uh, transfer window. So he was uh, wrong um, about that. Nemanja Matic, of course, wasn't uh, playing today. I think um, he's currently uh, suspended because he did get uh, sent off um, against uh, Man City, did uh, Matic. But I think he's a liability. He's too inconsistent. He's too slow. Again, you know, Man United overpaid for him. Pereira needs to go. Jesse Lingard needs to go. I do feel as though that Chon's going to be leaving uh, the club um, in the summer on a free transfer. I think he's going to be either going to Juventus um, or into Milan. You know, Luke Shaw probably needs to go now because, surprisingly, Brandon Williams didn't start today. I thought Brandon Williams would have started because, you know, Brandon Williams is our first choice uh, left back. And I, you know, I think, you know, he's a much better solution than Luke Shaw. And Luke Shaw's also had a lot of um, injury problems um, as a Manchester United player. So there's still a lot, still quite a lot of players I would, uh, you know, get rid of, despite the fact that a lot of players have left since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's um, arrival. So there's more players I would get rid of, but there would be still players I would be determined to keep at the club. Obviously, I'd be determined to keep him at Tommy Way. I know he's injured at the moment, but before he got injured, you know, he was a revelation in our midfield. And obviously, you know, when Pogba and Tommy Way do come back, you know, we'll look much better in that midfield and that. I think Pogba could be back for the game against Chelsea after the winter break. I think Matomway is due back sometime uh, this month as well, don't forget. So we'll look uh, much uh, better, you know, when they're uh, currently uh, back in that. You know, I think Paul Pob will also leave the club in the summer. Um, I would be determined. I probably would still keep Martial. I'd, you know, keep uh, Daniel James Bissaka and Harry Maguire, obviously. So there's not many players, you know, um, I would be uh, determined uh, to keep and that. But Solskjaer has confirmed, you know, that, you know, he does um, expect uh, more the departures and that. But Solskjaer was saying, you know, uh, not too long ago that he didn't expect more signings at Manchester United. Obviously, this is after... We completed the sign of Bruno Fernandes. But we did get someone else in. You know, we got Odeon Igalo um, on loan and that. 
and definitely no more signings are needed in the summer at Manchester United. I think, you know, we need around three or four more signings in the summer if we are to be back to being a competitive elite level football club and if we are, you know, to be um, up there uh, challenging for major uh, monitors and that. I don't think we're going to win the league for several years. You know, I think in the next couple of seasons, definitely our aspirations are going to be that top four because, you know, we haven't won the league for seven years now. So the last time we won it was back in 2013 in Alex Ferguson's uh, last uh, season. And we are, um, we are um, all um, aware that it is a transition period. Of course, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is hopeful that we can uh, get uh, through uh, this uh, transition uh, period and that. But, you know, we won't uh, sack uh, Solskjaer um, at the moment. You know, definitely uh, not. And there's still more deficiencies in the squad that need to be addressed. I think in the summer, Manchester United need to consider getting a left-back in. I think we also need to get a holding midfielder in. I think, you know, possibly, you know, we need to uh, get um, a right winner. I think Solskjaer is keen on recommending um, a number 10 in. So, yeah, we do need around uh, three or four players in because Solskjaer, of course, is looking to uh, buy um, into our history and he's looking to recruit players in, you know, that can, you know, replicate, you know, what... The team did um, under um, Alex Ferguson that, so he's hopeful that they can emulate um, into um, Alex Ferguson. You know, Solskjaer believes that you know Bruno Fernandes will be a very good signing for Man United. You know, he says he's a fantastic human being. He feels as though he will be a great addition to the squad. And Bruno Fernandes says he's hopeful that he can bring success and you know bring uh, trophies uh, to uh, Manchester United. But I'm not going to criticise him because today was um, only uh, Bruno Fernandes' uh, first uh, game and that. But you know. Obviously, you know, the vast majority of the team um, is to uh, currently uh, blame. So there's not any problems with the backroom staff and the way the club's been run and all that, etc, etc. You know, there's also uh, problems um, on the pitch because there is um, a lot of um, aspects um, of our uh, game that do need to improve. And probably some United fans will say Martial needs to go because he's been poor recently. He's obviously, you know, sustained quite a few injuries this season. I thought Martial did well in his debut season when Louis van Gaal recommended him in. So he's had some good spells and he's also had some bad spells as a Manchester United player. But he has been subjected to transfer speculation um, in the past and that. But I feel as though, I don't want Solskjaer here, that's how I feel. But I feel as though sacking him at this moment in time wouldn't solve a lot of their problems. So it wouldn't be really uh, the right uh, solution. You know, we're not a club that's known for sacking managers. Despite the fact that we've sat three managers since the Alex Ferguson era. Of course, uh, we sat to uh, David Moyes after 10 months. You know, he enjoyed a really uh, short uh, tenure with the football club, did David Moyes. And that was at the fault of Ferguson, you know, for ever recommending him, uh, recommending him in. And obviously Van Gaal came in, you know, he, um, you know, won the FA Cup with us. But obviously, you know, the football was turgid under Louis, Louis Van Gaal. You know, obviously, you know, we had Mourinho, he enjoyed two and a half year tenure at Man United. But obviously, you know, it didn't work out um, under uh, Mourinho. And I've already given you uh, the main um, explanations why it didn't work out under Mourinho. Bad disputes with the board, bad disputes with a lot of the top players. And the board weren't back in the signings that I wanted to recommend in in the summer of 2018, uh, basically. But he did win the Europa League in the League Cup in his first season, did Jose Mourinho. So Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is our fourth permanent manager since uh, the Alex uh, Ferguson um, era and that. And obviously, you know, there was a lot of talks about Mitchell Pochettino coming to Manchester United to play Solskjaer. Um, I'm very, very doubtful that he will come into a play Solskjaer um, this season because um, obviously, you know, due to the clause in his um, Tottenham exit package, I don't think it'll happen. I think, you know, if Pochettino does get another job this season, Tottenham are determined to around £10 million in compensation. But what Man United should have done is when Jose Mourinho got sat, that's then when we should have uh, recommended um, Richo uh, Pochettino in. So that's a mistake uh, Manchester United, um, of course, uh, did uh, currently uh, make and that. So I'm gutted, you know, that we didn't recommend Pochettino in. He said basically uh, he'd, he'd come to Manchester United if he could take control of the transfers and obviously he didn't want Ed Woodward as our director um football and that. But, you know, without a shadow of a doubt, you know, you know, there's a lot of uh, changes uh, that are uh, needed um, at the football club, but... I don't think we'll ever be the team that was under Alex Ferguson. 
I know, don't forget Alex Ferguson, you know, was a very good manager, but he didn't win out in his first four years at Manchester United when we recommended him in from Aberdeen. But look what he went and accomplished after that four-year period. You know, his as a manager, his influence in the game was just absolutely uh, phenomenal, basically. And he's one of the greatest managers of all time, is Alex Ferguson. Uh, you know, he controlled the transfer policies, controlled the contracts, you know, developed um, a lot of uh, young players and that. But, you know... I just don't see Solskjaer, you know, being the next Alex Ferguson. You know, Solskjaer feels as though if he's given the time, he thinks he can build a team like Liverpool's. He thinks he can also emulate into the next year and Klopp. Because for me, he's he's been talking about Jurgen Klopp in, in the last couple of weeks and he said, you know, it took Jurgen Klopp um, at least uh, three or four years, you know, to get him to a level uh, with Liverpool. But analyse it in the moment, you know, City are strides ahead of us, Liverpool are strides ahead of us. And it's going to take us several years, you know, to uh, emulate uh, to their uh, level because it is um, a long uh, rebuilding uh, process and that. You know, but analyse it, you know, there's only five players that are all in the shards. You know, who he's obviously, you know, recruited in since he's come in. The vast majority of these players are Jose Mourinho's, who's, you know, Solskjaer's inheriting them. There's still some players here from the Van Gaal era. There's still Matty here from the David Moyes era. And there's still a couple of players here from the um, Alex uh, Ferguson um, era, don't forget. But he's not uh, the right uh, manager uh, for uh, Manchester United. Because obviously before he came to Man United, he managed Mould. Won a couple of Norwegian titles with Mould. Before he was at Mould, he was at Cardiff. And he enjoyed them um, really a uh, shorter tenure with Cardiff. Uh, the main explanation why he got sat from Cardiff is because, you know, his record was uh, very, very um, bad um, at Cardiff and that. So I think Man United need to probably recommend the manager in at the top level and manager with a proven pedigree. But there again, it's not always the right solution because we've had two managers um, at the elite level and that's Louis van Gaal and Jose Mourinho, who, of course, uh, Manchester United uh, did uh, sack her, basically. Did a uh, sack uh, basically in that, but maybe now uh, we're not uh, going to uh, get uh, that current uh, top four. Um, I do uh, not uh, know basically. Just want to uh, give you uh, the other uh, results uh, today. Well, some of the results, you know, Chelsea drew 2 2 with Leicester. Liverpool beat Southampton by four goals to nil. Obviously, you know, Liverpool have now extended their unbeaten run to 42 in the Premier League. The 53 games now unbeaten at Anfield, and they have registered what? Uh, is it around 74? Three, seven, is it 73 points from uh, 20, is it 24 league games have registered 73 uh, points and you know they are uh, breaking uh, records uh, my Liverpool and you know they're on course to win their first Premier League title for 30 years so they are uh, going to end uh, their uh, 30 year, year uh, drought at Liverpool you know I think some of the other results today uh, I think you know Everton beat Watford 3-2 I think West Ham drew 3-3 with Brighton Newcastle drew nil nil with Norwich. Drew nil nil with Warwick Norwich. Um Did Bournemouth beat Aston? I think Bob didn't Bournemouth beat Aston Villa two one if I'm right. So that's uh, some of uh, today's uh, results um, and all um, of that. But yeah, so Solskjaer is not the right uh, manager for uh, Man United. But I feel as though, even though we have been inconsistent, you know, for a while, I still feel as though we've got the resources in the back end of the club, you know, to get uh, the players uh, that we uh, do uh, want uh, in, uh, basically, in that. So yeah, so the next time Manchester United do play is against Chelsea on the 17th of February. Then we've got Club Brugge coming up in the knockout stages of the Europa League and that, you know, we've still got City to play at home this season. You know, so yeah, um, you know, something needs to uh, change um, at Manchester United and, you know, there's uh, nothing uh, much uh, really uh, more uh, to say in that. And, you know, we've also got a lot of young players in the squad and there's some aspects of me that credit Solskjaer because he has got a lot of trustworthy in his young players. You know, I think a lot of young players are going to become a success. I think Green was going to do well. I think Brandon Williams is going to do well. Two hands are based still out of injury. But when he comes back, I think he'll do well because he should get his opportunities at some point. You know, I think, you know, Tomway should do well. James Garner's played in a few games this season. You know, Chon's not good enough. You know, Angel Gomez, I think we also should move in on, move him on because, you know, Angel Gomez isn't uh, getting um, enough um, opportunities in the team. So, yeah, 
Um, there's a lot of young players I think that are going to become um, a su- success um, at the football club, uh, definitely in that. And obviously, you know, Solskjaer probably realises that he's not good enough for Manchester United as a manager and just doesn't, just, just doesn't want to admit it, basically. And I said, didn't I? I was saying this after the Artunal defeat to Burnley that, you know, Solskjaer should resign as Manchester United manager, but obviously he isn't going to resign, be- resign because obviously, you know, then he isn't uh, currently uh, going to uh, get um, a payoff, uh, basically. So we've just got to hope to get something um, against uh, Chelsea, you know, on the uh, 17th um, of February. And, that, and, you know, Chelsea themselves are in a bad uh, run um, of form. You know, Frank, Lamp- Frank Lampard now has got um, a huge uh, predicament ahead of him. I don't think he's also uh, the right uh, manager uh, for Chelsea because they're also um, in a very bad position. They didn't make any signings in January. They went after a few plays, but they didn't uh, make uh, many uh, current uh, signings and that. But, you know, we're one of the richest clubs in the world. And, you know, look where we are. We've spent more money than Man City in the last six, seven years. We've spent a hell of a lot more than Liverpool. You know, we've, you know, we've... Spent a hell of a lot more than Leicester, so why are we in this uh, current uh, position? Um, I just don't understand because we don't play as a unit, like I mentioned. You know, you've got Liverpool that play as a unit, they play as a team, and they just know how to play. You know, Ar- Solskjaer has no style of play, like I've mentioned um, on my uh, recent uh, videos and that. So, anyway, guys, drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do consider a subscriber, um, as always, and take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon.